Hey everybody, welcome back. This is going to be an update on the work I'm doing to the upper and lower cowl for the Blue Angels Cruiser. I've got the video done and ready to upload, so sit back, relax, and enjoy. I finished sanding all these little holes that I filled, so everything here is nice and smooth. I've cleaned up the hole for the exhaust pipe. And one of the other things I'm working on is all of these edges. Now what I'm doing with all of these edges, anywhere there's an edge, whether it's the back of the cowling or this, is I take some sandpaper and I wanna kind of round the edges. Because if you have a sharp 90 degree edge on any of your corners, the paint won't wanna to stick to that 90 degree edge. And that's where you'll end up getting some chips. So I just take some sandpaper like this and where that 90 degree edge is, I just try to just round it off a little bit so it's a little bit more round than a sharp corner. I have another issue here that I need to address before I can paint the cowl. I noticed before that my valve cover for the cylinder was rubbing on the cowling. So I put this stick on heat shield here just thinking it would kind of cushion that, but it didn't. If you look at the, the cover here, which is just aluminum I think, you can tell that it's really starting to, it already took off the coating on there. It hasn't done any damage to the cover itself, but it is starting to wear on the, the coating. So I think that's a problem I need to address before I finish up the cowling. I think what I'll probably have to do is cut out an opening here to give that cylinder some room and then I'll have to fiberglass some sort of slightly domed cover here uh, just to give it some breathing room. And hopefully I can do it in a way that doesn't look stupid. All right, now in preparation for the new nut plates I'm putting on, I've taken 80 grit sandpaper and I've scuffed up all the places where I'm gonna put a small square of, a, of a fiberglass. And then on the outside here, I'll mix up that kind of that peanut butter resin solution that I showed you in the last update video. And I'll fill these two holes on every one of these nut plates. I think there's 14 total. And then once that resin is dry, I can sand them smooth. And that'll basically make it so just the big hole is there. These two holes will be completely filled. And then I can put in the new nut plates and drill the new holes for those. All right, so here's how I do this. I just take a very tiny bit of resin here and I'll wipe it on the fiberglass. And it really doesn't take much resin at all. And then I have this little tiny piece of fiberglass. I just cut them into about one inch by half inch rectangles. Once you put it on, just kind of wipe that uh, or dab it a little bit and let the fiberglass, or the resin I should say, soak up through the fiberglass. And you'll notice it covers all three holes. I don't really need it to cover the center hole. I'm just gonna cut that out again anyway, but it's just easier to put one square on there than two little ones on each hole. Just grab a tiny bit of resin. And I've already scuffed up the fiberglass here with 80 grit uh, sandpaper. Got one of these hair from the brush in there. That's what happens when you buy cheap brushes. Put a piece of fiberglass on there. You don't notice I don't put any more resin on the brush. I just kind of take it and let the resin I put on the fiberglass cowl soak into the, this new fiberglass. So that's the first step. After that, after I do all these, I'll go ahead and fill the holes with the peanut butter. All right, now the next step is I take the same resin and I'm just gonna kind of wet the inside of that hole a little bit. And I'm gonna take this other resin that I've mixed with flocks and micro balloons and just try to 
push some of it in that hole as little as possible so it's less I have to sand off. I think I'm going to try to smooth it out a little bit. This will just help with sanding. Except right now it's tending to pull it out of the hole. From the outside, when I push this peanut butter in the hole, it tends to push it back through here. So what I do is I just, when I'm done, I go back with a brush and just kind of lightly flatten that back out again. What's kind of nice about doing this is, since there's a, a little bit of a, a bulge here, when I kind of smooth it out like this, it's almost like a rivet. You're flattening it out and now you've got that peanut butter coming through the hole and kind of spreading out. So it, it really helps hold it in place. Like I said, kind of almost like if you pitch or squeeze in a rivet. So here it is, all of the holes now are filled. And then on the outside, I've tried to wipe away as much of the resin or peanut butter, I call it, as I can, just to save me a little bit of sanding. But each one is now filled. Once it dries, I can sand that smooth. And then this whole area right here will just kind of be as smooth as this, with the exception is I'll still have the one big hole. And then uh, I can put a nut plate behind there and drill two new holes for the new nut plates. Yep, then once that's done, I'll probably cut this out of the cowling right here and then from the outside I'll putty something up and fiberglass on like a little blister or something to give that cowling some room. Now that the resin is dry, I'm just using an X-Acto blade just to go around the, the big hole and cut out that little bit of fiberglass cloth that I had covering that center hole. Quick and easy. Well, all that peanut butter and resin has dried. I've sanded it smooth. I've installed all the new nut plates. And now I need to put the cowling back on because on the top cowl, I need to paint the yellow and the blue. And I need to put the cowl on to see exactly where I need to mask off those tape lines. I've already put the orange mylar masking tape on the left side of the airplane and now I'm putting it on the right side of the airplane trying to match it as best I can to the other side but more importantly than matching it to the other side is just making sure that it looks straight. Now what I'm doing is I'm using micrometers to get the distance between the bottom of the cowl and the, the bottom of the orange line on the left side and seeing how close that matches in the same spot to the right side. Again, I want them to look pretty even, but it's more important to have them look straight. This would be a lot easier if the Mooney wasn't in the way, but all I'm doing is seeing how they look if the lines look straight compared to the fuselage and then the, uh, the left and right if they look about the same. Here's my oil door. I like these butterfly thumb screws that nobody else seems to like, but I really like them. They're quick and easy. And the door looks pretty good now that it's all finished up. I've done everything I needed to do with the cowling on, so now it's time to take it off and paint the yellow, and then I'll paint the blue. 
Now these little orange mats you see here are super handy. If you guys go to gripmat.com, I have a deal set up with them. When you check out, you can put in a discount code and that's KITPLANE10 and you'll get 10% off of your first order. I make a few bucks too, so it does help me out a little bit, but these things are handy. They won't scratch the airplane and I use them all the time. Well, one last step here with the top cowl before I paint the yellow is what you're looking at is I'm scraping off, not a run, but a little bit of buildup of paint on the very bottom of this part of the cowl. When I painted the white, I think I might have thinned the paint a little too much or I didn't wait long enough in between coats to spray, but the paint kind of pulled up a little bit on the bottom as you can see. And uh, I'm just scraping it off to flatten it out with a razor blade. Now, I would not be doing this if I wasn't painting over this area. This will get painted yellow. Uh, if it was just going to stay white, I would just leave it as it is and, you know, have a little build up of paint. But since it, it does get repainted over, uh, I'm just going to try to flatten this out as much as I can uh, before I spray the yellow paint over it. Well, thank you for watching everybody. I will end the video here. This is the top cow with the, the masking done. I'll tape off the rest of the white that I don't want paint on and then I can get the yellow painted. Here it is here, painted yellow. I'll let this dry for about three or four days and then I have to paint the top thin blue stripe and the top cow will be done. In the meantime, I'll continue working on the bottom cow. See you next time.